The coming days. During this Lenten season, we've heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. I invite you all to stand as you're able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. shall mark for you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all deities of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read a selection from Psalm 116 responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listen to my supplications. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, it is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. just 
finished the meal, and now yet in another example of love, Jesus kneels before them and silently washes their feet. It is for this purpose that Jesus came to dwell among us because God loved the world. Recently, I read a story on Facebook that I wanted to share with you today. Although, unfortunately, I could not find the name of the author. <coughs> Excuse me. It reminded me of a world religious tradition class that I took when I went to college. We studied all of the different religions, and when we got to Christianity, I was kind of shocked that so many people either took it for granted or just didn't understand it at all. Perhaps that's why I connected so deeply with this story. Dr. Christensen was a professor of religion who worked at a small college in the Western United States, teaching the required survey course in Christianity. Every student was required to take it during their freshman year, regardless of their major. Although he tried hard to communicate the essence of the gospel in his class, Dr. Christensen found that most of the students saw the course as required drudgery. Despite his best efforts, most students refused to take it seriously. To this end, Dr. Christensen asked Steve, a well-liked and brilliant student, to stay after class one day so that he could talk to him. How many push-ups can you do? The professor asked. Steve replied, I do about 200 every night. That's pretty good, but do you think you could do 300? He asked. I don't know, Steve replied. I've never done 300 at one time. Can you do 300 in sets of 10? I have a special class project in mind and I need you to do about 300 push-ups in sets of 10 for this to work. Can you do it? I need you to tell me that you can, said the professor. Steve responded, well, I think so. Yeah, I can do it. Steve got to class early that day and sat all the way in the front of the room. When class started, the professor pulled out a big box of fancy donuts. Everyone was pretty excited to get an early start on the weekend with a party in Dr. Christensen's class. The professor went to the first girl in the first row and asked, Cynthia, do you want to have one of these donuts? Cynthia said, yes. He then turned to Steve and asked, would you do 10 push-ups so that Cynthia can have a donut? Sure. Steve jumped down from his desk to do a quick 10 and then returned to his desk. The professor put the donut on Cynthia's desk. And so it went down the aisle Steve did 10 push-ups for every person before they got their donut. In the second row, the professor came to Scott, who was on the basketball team and in very good condition himself. When the professor asked, Scott, do you want a donut? Scott replied, well, I can do my own push-ups. Dr. Christian said, no, Steve has to do them. Scott responded, that I don't want one. The professor shrugged and then turned to Steve and asked, would you do 10 push-ups so that Scott can have a donut he doesn't want? With perfect obedience, Steve started to do 10 push-ups. Scott said, hey, I said I didn't want one. Dr. Christensen responded, this is my classroom. My class, my desk, and these are my donuts. Just leave it on the desk if you don't want it. And so he put a donut on Scott's desk. By this time, Steve had begun to slowly 
down a little bit. He just stayed on the floor between the steps because it took too much effort to be getting up and down. You could start to see a little bit of perspiration coming around his brow. As the professor started down the third row, the students were beginning to get a little angry. Dr. Christensen asked Jenny, do you want a donut? Sternly, Jenny said, no. Then Dr. Christensen asked Steve, would you do 10 more push-ups so that Jenny can have a donut that she doesn't want? Steve did 10 and Jenny got a donut. By now, a growing sense of uneasiness filled the room. More students were beginning to say no, and there were many uneaten donuts on the desk. Steve also had to really put forth a lot of extra effort to get all those push-ups done. There was a small pool of sweat forming on the floor beneath his face and his arms and brow were beginning to get red because of the physical effort involved. As the professor started down the fourth row, some students from other classes wandered in and sat down. When he realized this, he did a quick count and saw that now there were 34 students in the room and he worried if Steve would be able to keep up. The professor continued on to the next person and the next and Steve was having some difficulty taking more and more time to do each set. A few moments later, another student named Jason was about to come in when all the students yelled as one, no, don't come in, stay out. Jason didn't know what was going on. Steve picked up his hat and said, no, no, let him come in. The professor said, you do realize that if Jason comes in, you will have to do 10 push-ups for him. Steve said, yes, let him come in, give him a donut. The professor responded, okay, Steve, I'll let you get this one out of the way right now. He turned to Jason and asked, do you want a donut? Not knowing what was going on, Jason responded, yeah, I'll have a donut. Then the professor turned to Steve. Will you do 10 push-ups so that Jason can have a donut? Steve did 10 push-ups very slowly and with great effort. Jason, bewildered, was handed a donut and then he sat down. Steve's arms were now shaking with each push-up as he struggled to lift himself up against the forces of gravity. Sweat was profusely dropping off of his face, and by this time, there was no sound except for his heavy breathing. There wasn't a dry eye in the room. <coughs> the last two students were cheerleaders. Dr. Christensen went to Linda first and asked, do you want a donut? Linda said very sadly, no, thank you. The professor quietly asked, Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so that Linda can have a donut she doesn't want? Grunting from the effort, Steve did 10 very slow push-ups for Linda. Then the professor finally turned to Susan. Do you want a donut? Susan, filled with tears overflowing down her face, said, Dr. Christensen, why can't I help him? With tears of his own, he replied, Steve has to do it alone. Then turning to the class, he told them, Steve is in charge of seeing that everyone has an opportunity for a donut, whether they want it or not. When I decided to have this party, I realized that Steve was the only student with a perfect grade. Everyone else had failed a test, skipped a class, or offered me inferior work. 
Steve had told me that when a player messes up in football practice, he must do push-ups. So I told Steve that none of you could come to my party unless he paid the price by doing your push-ups. He and I made this deal for your sake. Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so that Susan can have a donut? And Steve very slowly finished his last push-up with an understanding that he had accomplished all that was required of him, having completed 350 push-ups. His arms buckled beneath him and Steve fell to the floor. On that day, with Steve's immense help, Dr. Christensen offered a real example of God's great love. The students were able to experience what it feels like to have someone suffer for them, to have someone pay the price for their mistakes, their sins, for the days that they decided not to study or simply not show up. Whether they wanted it or not, Steve paid the price so that they could have the prize. His classmates received far more than a donut that day. Dr. Christensen concluded the lesson, and so it was that our Savior Jesus Christ offered this prayer to God as he hung on the cross. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus knew that he'd done everything that was required of him, and he gave up his life. Unfortunately, like some in this room, far too many of us leave this gift on the desk, uneaten. God's great love shown to us in Jesus is given for us all, for those who live faithfully and those who betray him, for those who understand what it means to be Christian and those who get it all wrong, for those who attend church regularly in person or online and those who haven't been to church in a long, long time, for those who love and care for their neighbors and those choose to ignore them. Jesus lovingly paid the price for us all. We're all included in God's love. The price that Jesus paid was so that we could have the ultimate price, that of salvation and eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God in Christ. We pray this holy night for the needs of the world. After the words, hear us, O God, you may respond, your mercy is great. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your children for your promises in the sacrament and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, especially those on our prayer list, and those we offer now, out loud, or in our hearts. Embrace those who are dying and comfort those who care for them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire his congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your glory shone in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loved us to the end. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We're still not quite able to shake hands or hug just yet, but we can offer the peace of Christ to those around us with a nod of a head or a hand over our heart. And whether we're participating online or in person, we can also reach out to others in a variety of safe ways, with a phone call, a card, a letter, an email, or a text reach out to others and offer them the love and peace of God for us all. God works in us and through us using all that we give to support our ministry, including the care of those in need. If you're having a difficult time, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let us be a blessing for others, just as Christ has been a blessing for us all. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels of the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to pull out your little communion kit. Peel back the top layer to reveal the wafer and put it in your pan. Then peel back the bottom layer to reveal the juice. Hold them up so that I know you are ready. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to him in this meal and be fed. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. Amen. so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm, and not human, scorned by all, 
and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver, let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. Yet, you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joy. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers encircles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments amongst them. For my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls. You have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. 
their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. <laughs> 